Christmas to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and celebrating this day with your family, with your friends. You know, you and I, we Christians, have once again an opportunity to celebrate this most profound, fundamental teaching in our Christian faith, the Incarnation. Why the need to celebrate the Incarnation year in and year out? Why? It is because, according to the Gospel of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. And that is what Christmas is all about. And that is what incarnation is all about. Because in the incarnation, God intervened in, the, in history, in the history of the world. God intervened or entered into your history and my history. In my life, you and all of us have our history. So incarnation means that God entered into that particular history that God becomes historical. And when God comes into our lives, that makes us realize that God is not just someone who is out there. That God is not just lurking somewhere, but God really emptied himself of his divinity to become like us, to share everything that we are except sin. That's how much, how deep the love of God for us, that he emptied himself and lived with us. I know perhaps some of us are still struggling to find meaning uh, in this Christmas, uh, struggling to find what is the purpose, what is, what is God trying to tell us during this time of the year. You know, we've gone through a lot, this raging COVID-19 and this Omicron that puts Michigan again as a hotspot or flashpoint. And what's, what happened in the tragic incident at Oxford. And as we, some of us have lost loved ones who lived in Western Kentucky and nearby, uh, nearby states and calamities as well, natural calamities overseas. There's so many things going on and it's only human to struggle, to struggle to find meaning. Where is the silver lining in all of this? If God indeed is incarnated in our lives, in my life, and then where is God in all of this? These questions are very, very legit and very human. Now, in our faith, we are invited we are invited to rise from this question because if we persist to find meaning through our minds, which we are so always accustomed to doing, uh, we tend to find meaning through the lens of our reason, of our logic. And you and I, we know that our reason always falls short, always falls short, falls short with so many things that are going on. Why these things? Why this loss? Why this pain and suffering? That is why this incarnation, this Christmas, invites us to share to the level of our faith. Allow our faith to be our lens so that we can start seeing things through the eyes of God. Because I bet you, dear friends, outside of faith, many of these things would not be meaningful. But thanks to our faith, thanks to the churches who gave us our faith for us to be able to see Things become, things become meaningful in our lives, even if they are so difficult, even if they, are, uh, they really makes us suffer. But through the eyes of faith, things start to become meaningful. And not only that, that you and I, we are not journeying alone. Yes, the meanings, the meanings and, and the purposes of all these things may not be obvious, may not be clear at this moment, but the moment we enter into, the, into faith, we enter into the will of God, then that is when the wisdom unveils itself. I can't forget remembering Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane because that was the most human moment in the life of Jesus because he too was struggling of the forthcoming torment uh, in his life. And he, he negotiated with God if these torments can be averted. And yet, you know, we remember what Jesus did. Jesus entered faith and said, but you are a father to me. So with these words, you are a father to me, you and I too, whatever it is that we may be going through in our lives, those of us who look to God, our father, as really our father like no one else. God, a father is not like our fathers here on earth. 
God is a father that Jesus called to. God is a father who will never allow his children, who will never allow his believers to, to suffer meaninglessly. But through God, when Jesus said, but you are a father to me, that you will not subject me to a useless or unnecessary moment, that everything that's happening in my life in due time will be revealed right in front of me. So that is why this Christmas, as we celebrate together, uh, as a family, as friends and relatives, as a church, we can continue to celebrate with joy. We can continue to celebrate with gratitude. But because we have a Father, we have a Father who takes care of us, even though we don't see it right now. But as a Father, everything becomes good for those who love the Father and those who call on God the Father, who will continue to walk with us, who is so near with us. So Merry Christmas and then a Happy New Year to all of you.